we're all, I mean, we're not super shallow. We all got a little bit of stack depth. I think this will be a pretty interesting three-handed uh, battle. I'm down. Uh, I don't even think I'm going to call with three e with a seven here if this guy three bits. Not gonna play it. Dun, 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 dun. Gonna be check raisin versus a third pot C bet. Doesn't need to be all that large. We're getting some value here and definitely protecting our hand a little bit from whatever random cards he has. And I think the range is going to be pretty wide for both opening on the button and for C-betting for that size. So, Gots to do it. Could probably consider opening in the small blind actually instead of limping here, but uh, I prefer to limp a lot against stronger players at these stack depths um, than raise. That's a dirty turn. Let's hope he doesn't have ace eight. If he has ace eight, it's like a super dirty turn. Um, yeah, we'll go for check raise here on the turn. The dirtiest of rivers. <laughs> what did he say? I should DDoS your stream for that bit. <laughs> well, you know you're going to get to see it at least. And we got some follows here. Uh, Bobby What with the follow. And Arch Arc Hits 05 with the follow as well. Thank you, guys. I think when we get raised on the on the flop, I mean, he's going to have some Ace X, some King X, and... Uh, I don't know. We just got a really good hand, so let's uh, overbet here. We would have some things that call an overbet. Dirty, dirty run out. Chris Reed is definitely wrong on his read. I do think he has to call there at some frequency. Um, I mean, I have hands like Jack-10, Queen-Jack, um, flush draws. All right, with him betting so small again on the turn, we're actually going to put him to a tough decision here with some raises. I think we can generate some folds by the river. Had he bet something like half pot, um, I would probably not even be considering this. Man, 
huge pot over here and the guy flops a set. That sucks. That one sucked. Um, 18, 25. The one problem I'm having with this is like, I'm actually just gonna call here. This guy has been limping a lot of his um, weaker hand range and he's only, the only opens I've seen have been very strong hands. Um, now, I mean, he could still have like ace, king, ace, queen, you know, stuff like that in his range. I don't think sevens is doing terrible, which is why we called, but I don't think I want to jam there against this guy when he's opening. How you doing, Queen B? Pedro Paul Hirini. Never gonna get that name right. <laughs> How you doing, man? through with the ace jack though. <laughs> what is this? No. <laughs> Really? You just get to spaz out completely and get there? I'm really sad about that right now, guys. Uh, here at 18, 20 big blinds effective, we're not uh, um, not opening very often, just going for a lot of limp, limp raises and maybe some limp calls depending on some parts of our hand range. God, that's so frustrating. Just gonna bet here. With ace high or king high, I'd probably actually just check and try to get the showdown. But... Reason a little larger than main because we're deeper over here. Krista Borg, have I ever told you how much I hate you? I hate you so much! <laughs> I need to learn the whole tactics. I do need to learn those. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to fold here with uh, team still left to act. Had he checked, I was actually going to donk. Oh, we made the money in the big 22, by the way, guys. I'll get a screenshot of the payouts. How did you choose your poker star's nickname? I wanted rigged for me, uh, but that one was already taken. And I knew the French um, 
The French for me is moi. Apparently it's not spelled this way. I didn't know that. I just assumed it was spelled this way. So um, I went with uh, rigged for moi. There's not really any, any more of a story behind it than that. I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do with ace-queen here if he decides to jam. Um, with Krista Borg being so short. Probably going to end up, would end up making like a tight fold. Oops, uh, big 22. <laughs> we almost get a free pass to overbet here and get ASEX to fold. So that's what I'm going to do. Get the splits to fold. It's almost impossible for him to have a better hand than us by the time we get to this river. I just want to keep betting. Do you three bet ace jack first and be willing to get it in if we would four bet jam? Um, I don't remember what the stack sizes were. Yeah, uh, once I three bet the uh, ace jack suited there, we're we're gonna be getting it in. Lizzie two 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 with a follow. Thank you very much. deals and we have to see we have to look at chip stacks and blinds and stuff like that like that's the most important thing for a deal i'll know although i say i hate uh hate crystal borg all the time in reality i like the dude but there's no friends in poker you gotta play you gotta play to make the most money you think you can make so I have to make a decision based on that good luck all in So dirty. <laughs> Good game, man. All right, I'm going to have to take this guy down in your honor. He should have been knocked out of the tournament so long ago. I'm just going to completely spaz off my stack and just get there. Tom Matthews 8. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that.
We're not going to 3-bet the 8s versus this guy. If he uh, opens to a large amount, just going to call. Not exactly set mining, but... Um, Pretty deep. I'm gonna make a small check raise here. I also don't know how often this guy's like barreling off um, bluffs. We do know that he has some spaz factor though, so maybe maybe that makes um, calling a little bit better. But any folds, that's a bummer. Sorry, I wanted to do this. We're all in over here. And, uh, oh yeah, I already said, uh, yes you are. Thank you for the follow. Did I say that? I'm totally losing my mind. I can't remember if I did or not, but I really appreciate the follow. Thank you guys. All right. Super short in this tournament. We got the double. So I just played a natural eight. We're spinning our hand while playing poker. <laughs> that sucks to hear, man. But the, the games are so soft. He's actually been folding quite a bit to my min open, so I'm going to just min open a lot until we get a reason not to. Ah. DJ and Hustler with the facts coming in with the info. Well, I'm going to be open wide, but not 2-8. Not yeah, he has just been like, you need that card to double up and not be knocked out of the tournament? Here it is for you. Just hand it to you. We're gonna call because we have some playability post flop. I'm not expecting to like make the best hand ever, but that raise is just too too small, and we have position. And he's overbetting, so we're out of that one. Back over here real quick. We're jamming with our a7. So this is a more reasonable size race. I'm going to fold that. But um, set mining. <laughs> okay, it looks like he's Actually, he's through about like two out of the last three hands or something. So it looks like the idea of trying to open um, open raise a super wide range is he's actually fighting back at it pretty well. Obviously, it could just be he's ran into good hands, but just gonna bet here and hope to take it down with our nine high. I'm not gonna barrel. <laughs> I take it down with my nine high. <laughs> uh, cool.
I'm not gonna fold a pair in a limp pot just yet. Um, shoot. Round two. Seem to be like a great player. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. My last time I was in Heads Up Battle, everyone was calling me a piece of crap. Not everyone. There was two guys that didn't approve of how I played, but... I like uh, Tom Matthews' opinion way more than theirs. Jack-7 suited, I would call, versus 3x open. The off suit... It's pretty meh. It's getting cold here. We also have this one. So the recent is for the year, and uh, results is for, real quick over here, we're all in. I guess we'll go to the two table view. Let's just stream at the two table view, that'll be easier. We'll just leave it here. And, I don't want quite over a bit. I'm just gonna go with standard bit size. Nice. We got chances. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Yes. <laughs> Let's freaking go, guys. Nice shitty hand. Thank you. I appreciate. You noticing? What did he have there? He had king four. Ha! Got him. It's telling me his game plan has changed. I don't know what that means. It means fold bunch. But they're suited. Four X opens. Man, I don't think I fold any heads up. Got some backdoor draws here. How long am I planning on staying in Tokyo? Uh, at least a couple more years. Um, I don't have any like extensively long-term plans, but uh, you know, for the next couple years, I'm definitely going to be here in Japan. But like five, ten, fifteen years from now, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna check back again and go for a bad bet on the river, or hope to induce a bluff. Didn't get it. Poor this guy in Queens. He should just never play Queens ever again. Who cares?
cares? If... <laughs> I was just kidding. I don't. I their opinion affects me very little. Aren't you overfolding? Heads up. Um. No. I don't think I've seen any hands that merited me not, or merited me continuing that I folded. <laughs> Uh, GC Fran uh, Frank Uli. Uh, thank you very much for the, the follow. New Zealand. You could limp most of the hands, and I don't see anything wrong with Jack Seven. Um, well, against this guy specifically, though, he's been um, he's been limping a bunch and only raising. I mean, throughout the entire final table, his raises have been um, premium hands. That's all I've seen from him. I haven't seen anything that's um, not been a strong range. So, with that read, if he's opening three x, I'm not going to call a jack seven. Against a player who's opening, you know, 70% of buttons for 3x, absolutely I'm calling with jack 7. Or 50% or whatever like that, but that's not what this guy's doing. Um, however, as far as limping most hands, I think I think you might be right there. Um, I might be overfolding, given that this guy isn't, like, really... He threw at me a couple times, but he's not really playing super tough. Um, so you, you might be onto something there. Um, I can almost check fold against this guy. He's been really tight. Well, I'm considering whether I want to block bet or check fold. I'm just going to go check fold against him. Hurry up with the follow. Thank you, man. Is there a pattern? Shouldn't you be raising hands that have an eight in them pre-flop for bluffs? Um, I think you're trying a little bit too hard to find like some sort of set rule. Um, when he's betting this small, though, I'm a little bit, I'm wondering what missed. Um, yeah, I think we're still folding here. Part of it's also because there was a third player in before. So that makes his range a little bit stronger. Could almost consider check raising here. I don't know if I like a check call. I mean, this run out, right? If I have five four here, I have five six. I have six seven. Well, I have five seven. Um, I have a bunch of king x. I'm just gonna fold. So I posted my heads up PLO cash and somebody comments you suck and you're broke and you're bad at poker. <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, usually the people that are like that are the ones that uh, they're probably marginally winning and are just kind of stuck in their same old patterns or just are terrible for the most part. I mean, maybe there's there are some guys out there that are actually crushers that just have really bad attitudes, but that's very rare, I think. Probably gonna get jammed on here if he has like a strong hand. I think we do generate some full equity though. I don't mind folding a nine high flush draw. Um, we get pretty lucky on the turn. We bet 35. I'm gonna stick with 40. And then we have an easy jam set up for the river. He min raises. Well, if it's flush over flush, that's such, such a crappy way. But I'm never, ever, ever, ever folding a flush heads up. We get there. I can't see move glancing hands. Move. All right, we're just shoving the king six. Can we do it? Yes. Yes. First win of the, uh, let me get the lobby pulled up here so I can get that screenshot. We did it boys and girls. First win of the year. All right, we're down to one table. So anyways, uh, oh, Oh, Harder, when you were talking about me, um, you know, folding some, folding tightly for a little bit or limping, and then now all of a sudden I'm raising queen five off. Um, my idea for heads up is that I, I want to try to be as aggressive as possible, um, as aggressive as possible that I think the player is allowing me to do it. And you saw, if you're watching the whole thing, you'd, you, saw earlier, you know, I was testing, I was raising, I wasn't limping at all. I was either raising or folding and he threw at me a couple times. So then I backed off a little bit and then I kind of sensed that, you know, maybe post floppy was folding a little bit. So that might mean that he's folding a little bit um, more pre-flop and stuff like that as well. So now I want to start, even if I have some weaker hands or whatever, I want to start applying pressure pre-flop and start testing him and see, see if I can um, see what he's doing, see where his head's at. Um, and uh, so I don't have like a set, like I'm limping these hands, I'm raising these hands, I'm three betting these hands, especially heads up, because I feel like for me personally, I am able to adjust very quickly and very well to whatever mental state I think my opponent's at. Um, and I'm always gonna try and test, test out where I think they are at. So um, that's kind of my, my reasoning for maybe some of the things where you see like, oh, he limped that hand before and now he's raising it. It's because I'm just trying out some things of what I, where I think that guy's at. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Heads up master with the cheer, man. The hundred biddies. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Thank you guys very much. And all in Pav, that's kind of a big deal that you're hanging out my stream, man. I feel like I'm leveled up. <laughs> And the big 22 bank and coming. Well, if you said it, I got to do it. Can't disappoint. Oh, he's out of here. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. Have a good night. And thank you, everyone, as well. We did it. So the first in that was 1728.41. So uh, first place got uh, just over 1700. You are so sick. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I had observer chat turned on. 
Um, I'm just going to check back this board. I'm almost tempted to call and then like run a bluff on the river or think about raising now. The only problem is this guy's just been so tight and this turn is actually one of the better ones for me. Like my ace queen's a check back, made a straight, my ace king's a check back, made top pair. Um Alright, that was full. We got the pocket jays. Oh, he's got to shove, right? He's got to shove. Can we hold it? We can hold it. Are you serious? You are. <laughs> That's rude. You're a sub, or you're not supposed to talk to me like that. Yeah, I think on the, the King Jack hand, where I made the flush, um, he probably could have raised on the flop. I and mean, we already have a big pot built at that point. Um, he's got a very strong hand for heads up. Gonna fold here. I don't really see, I mean, it doesn't make much sense for him to take that line and then try to get it on the turn when the majority of my bluffs that I'm bluffing with got there. Um, Or I guess a couple of the bluffs, like now that there's only one card left to come, he's actually doing reasonably well against it. So why not just call and let those continue? I mean, he's going to call the flop. I think he should probably just call the turn. I don't know. But I would, I would have, if I was in his spot, I would have probably preferred to just get it in on the flop. You agree heads up should change your play style a lot to confuse your players from knowing your patterns? Uh, no. Um, that was, so, um, that was how I used to play heads up when I very first started. And basically what would happen is as soon as a hand got to showdown, I would go in my head and be like, okay, he saw this hand at showdown. What does he, what does he think that means? So he probably thinks this about my range and he's probably going to make these adjustments. And I would try to pre-adjust the adjustment and more often than not, the dude never adjusted. They saw the showdown. They didn't know what it meant, what to do with it. So they just kept playing their game. And a lot of times I would make this crazy adjustment thinking that, you know, I had to counteract and make the adjustment before them. And uh, it would end up costing me chips because I was doing something very exploitative when there wasn't really any real grounding to try to be exploitative in that case. So um, I think in in heads up, you should stick to your game plan, your basic strategy, unless you have some really good reasons to change from that. And your your baseline strategy should be balanced enough where um, it should be balanced enough that people aren't going to really be able to pick up on if you have maybe a couple, I don't know, a couple leaks in your baseline strategy because obviously no one's perfect that it should still be good enough where they're it's going to be pretty hard for them to find those and pretty hard for them to take advantage of it um but if you do if you are noticing something you know if you're noticing something that maybe you could think could take advantage of your opponent yeah you should change your style and try to take advantage of it um 
if you think the opponent's starting to overfold or is getting tight, then you want to try to ramp up your aggression. If you think they're getting way more aggressive, then maybe you want to back off a little bit and or find some good spots to um, hang on. Uh, I'm going to just call here. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But um, I wouldn't just like randomly try to make a bunch of changes to my game just so people can't figure out what I'm doing. I have, I have like no idea what's going on here. <laughs> um, I'm not folding nines just yet. Hey. It's just kind of reasonable for us. We'll see what he does on the river. Oh, he gets there. When I said I have no idea what he's doing, I just mean I don't have any stats on, so I don't know anything about this guy. That's good. Definitely make uh, making poker friends. I think is uh, very good for for your game. So let's talk about the nines. Um, had he bet like a third pot on this flop, I would have certainly check raised, trying to get a little more protection and and uh, the range being wider here. I didn't want to jam pre flop. I think I'm a little bit deep for that. Although if like I had a read that he was just getting crazy, then. At our stack size, it's perfectly fine. But again, I don't have any reads on him. Uh, other than the fact that he's got a giant stack and might be playing aggressive, given that he's got everyone else covered. But I just went from the fact that he's um, mid-position, so average going to be a little bit tighter. And we're a little bit too deep for me to want to get a nines. So that's basically my reprieve flop for not jamming or through betting. Had he been on the button or the cutoff, maybe even, maybe even the cutoff, I would be more likely to do it. Um, on the flop when he's betting half pot and then half pot again. I do think there are bluffs, obviously, uh, where I would, wouldn't be calling here because I doubt. I mean, maybe there's ace-8, king-8 suited type stuff that's betting. But for the most part, we're just a bluff catcher. I don't think there's a ton of hands that are um, that are trying to value bet that are worse than our nines, um, if any. Uh, but I think here we're still still getting a good enough price and are strong enough that we need to call on the turn. On the river, I was trying to decide if I would have called if he jammed. And that would have been a tough choice. Um, yeah, that's a bummer that I uh, close that out. Um, So Jack-10 could have been playing this way had he jammed. Obviously, all of his old repairs are playing this way. If he had a set, they're all playing this way. Bluff-wise, we block like... Um, and with the river being a jack, like Jack-9 suited probably isn't jamming. Um, Queen-9 suited, we do have some blockers for that. Um, so I think had he jammed this river, I probably would have ended up folding. readjust the the adjustment <laughs> yeah i was always like well not always when i first started playing heads up i was i really enjoyed like the psychology of it and just really messing with people and uh seeing if i could basically i just wanted to exploit everyone as much as i possibly could but sometimes i took it way too far big 82 champion We can win this flip. The all-powerful ace king. Let's go. <laughs> I hate you guys so much. Making fun of me. Especially you, mental.
Flip number two in the books. We got, oh crap. Well, that one didn't pan out. Back down to 10-ish ten, big blinds. Folded to me, definitely jamming. Can't hit them all, otherwise we start thinking it's rigged. But I just put it in my name. I'm telling you guys up front, it's rigged for moi. Yeah, here we go. Oh, we can do this. We can't do this. Just a split. Don't really have any reshuff stacks here or anyone that's just going crazy. Hey, don't tell them my hand. Well, that'll end uh, that'll end that.